Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. My name is Lester. And as you can see, I got a new, nice new haircut. Finally. Hope man. you like uh, my haircut. If you like my haircut, leave it in the comments below. Lah. Give me a thumbs up for the haircut and follow <laughs> me on Instagram. Oh, I mean, you can follow us <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> at IMO.pod. At IMO.pod, guys. And uh, for those people who missed the announcement last week, we're ending it off on episode 40 for season 1. So if you have any suggestions for the remaining half of the, ep- the remaining like 10, 7 episodes of ep- season 1, uh, leave it in the comments down below. Or if you have any suggestions to improve this podcast for next season, if you want to see other features or other ways that we can do this podcast, also leave it down in the comments down below and we will definitely get to them. Yeah, you must know your comments you know, are always valuable to us. So please leave more, man. Compliment me on my look. That's fine. I accept those kind of comments as well. And uh, <laughs> to reward you all for subscribing, here's a bit of a clickety-click of my fidget toy. Let's get into today's topic. Let's get into <laughs> this topic. And today, we are actually talking about some uh, a topic that actually one of you, uh, I, f- I forgot your name, so sorry, but you actually suggested us during this episode is elit- elitism within, within schools. And... Mm. Uh, it's something that we were quite interested in talking about because uh, we are coming from I guess an elite school perspective because uh, John was from CJ which is a pretty good school and I was from Hua Chong which is also a pretty good school so um, whatever we talk about today will be in that lens we don't really have maybe we might miss out some things because we are we are from that culture or that system so if there are any things you want to leave down in the comments down below also do that but mm. today we'll just be focusing on what we observe within our own environment and the things yep. that we feel are a bit more problematic. Uh. Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, CJ is not exactly the best school, but because it being a JC, right, there is yeah, this yeah. like JC mentality that everyone has. Yeah. Uh, I can offer a bit more perspective from my secondary school times mm-hmm. because I was from a SEP school. So yeah, that would be today's topic. What's your, what's your school again, uh, secondary school? C- C- Catholic High. High. Okay. So Where yes. the two Lee brothers were at. Oh yeah, it's the reason why you went into that school, right? Yes, it's the reason why the adults outside this door <laughs> put me into that school. <laughs> uh, which I mean leads on very well to the first um, point about elitism. We were actually talking about it and we were saying that like the parents' generation has a very uh, big part to play when it comes to uh, em- like, like inculcating such a mindset in children. Yeah. So like even from mm. very young, things like um I don't know about other people, but like for us and John, for me and John, like people from Poly when we were younger were known to be were like thought of to be like less academically gifted or like even less gifted than people from JC. Yeah, it's very true. I think like uh in secondary school especially, because everyone was either like yourself, IB, don't even need to think, or yeah. every, every other person was getting ready for O-level exam, right? Mm-hmm. So, O-level was one of those things whereby people be like, you know, it's almost a joke sometimes among students that like, oh, I, uh, don't do well, go poly law. You know, it's like a, like a second choice thing. Ah, uh, yeah. I get on, I get on. Which I think is, is uncalled for. Yeah. Especially now at, uh, that I've reached this age, right? I feel that like it was very unfair to the people who actually went to poly and the poly system mm. in general because I, I think it's a different education system and it's also higher education. So I don't know where this attitude was 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 you know sort of like brought into school culture. So mm-hmm. Alistair just now put it a little bit too mildly, so I gotta put it out there and always be the bad guy that calls people <laughs> out on their bullshit. I blame adults <laughs> for teaching the children. I My blame goodness. the parents' generation for yeah. teaching children. Especially minors. Okay, I wouldn't say... Par- I say parents' generation. I don't mean parents. our parents' generation. I I mean parents in general. Okay, okay. Even young parents, okay? A large majority of you... I'm not going to say all. A large majority of you are the ones that put this mindset into our students, into our children, while yeah. they were still minors, as far as I'm concerned. They are, they are early teens. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they're early teens, it just means that, you know, they have not even for, uh, properly formed their own personal opinions about how society is like. The yes. only society that they are most familiar with is the society they meet every day and that is their friends and their peers in school. Yes, yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that this mindset, mindset right, is shared amongst 
a school level, especially if you're from like a SEP school, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If it's shared amongst a school level, it means the ones that introduced it to them, it, it cannot be born spontaneously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It cannot be spontaneously created as far as students and, 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 and minors are concerned. Mm-hmm. Every school looks the same. Yes. Until Every someone tells them otherwise, right? Until someone tells them otherwise, you better yeah. go into a good school. What the heck is a good school? <laughs> What's, what, what makes it an objectively good school? If it's listed yeah. on the MOE book, is it not a school? Mm-hmm. Why, why, why is it a good school, right? Yes, and yes. who is the one that put this into their heads? Parents. Adults, not just parents. <laughs> Adults. <laughs> and also like, I guess the whole, I, I, I think maybe it's a bit different now because like in the past, I remember from our gen, I, I say as if our generation is the same generation, but generally our age group, right? Like, mm. ASLE scores were being um, released. The cutoff points were being released. So everyone knew like, oh, Hua Chong was like, 257 this year or like RI was like yeah. 259 so they had a very tangible way of ranking schools they ranked it no but like at the same place. time okay I agree with you but like you know what we were discussing earlier before this episode right yeah. if let's say suddenly everyone kena the MI the man in black the neuralizer tomorrow yeah, yeah, right yeah. suddenly all sc- education is made equal again right yes. suddenly no school is better right yes yes everyone yes. will view Hua Chong to the neighborhood school exactly the same Raffles and the neighborhood school will be exactly the same if you think about it. Because the difference is what? The reputation. Uh. They receive the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the difference is one, the reputation, two, the track record. Yes. That's all. Because mm-hmm. you go to a school, right? The teachers will, will not teach you anything different. Uh. Why? Because you all go for the same exam. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? There's no value in teaching, teaching something different. But they will teach differently. Yes. They will not teach anything different. And that's why, like, I don't know, you know, last time I, I, I go to church, I can study with my friends from other schools. Same what? Yes, I right? agree. Secondary, whatever, camp mm. is the same camp throughout all schools. Mm-mm. So why is there this, this reputation of good school? Okay, because it started out from the older schools whereby uh, certain performers started to appear. Yes. This yes. is normal, right? There'll be people yeah. who perform well, there'll be people who perform not so well. This is normal. Yeah. But as... Uh, Word of mouth and reputation built that, hey, this school got this scholar. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, mm-hmm. there's an influx of people wanting to go there and hence the scholar count increases because there are more targets to hit. Yeah. There are more students. Yeah, correct. And then, I get it. as a result of that, the education system had to come up with a system to, to trim the hedges because the school hit max capacity. Yeah. And what's that? What's that uh, system? based on results. Grades. Yeah. They are based on grades. Yeah, based on grades. Mm-hmm. And this work this hence created an uh, uh, unspoken economy, you know, mm-hmm. where the better get better. Yes. And the not so better continue to not so better. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though what's the difference between each school? There's no objectively good or bad school. There isn't. But I mean right. this whole conversation goes back to the whole like uh very controversial statement that MOE put out. I don't know if it's MOE, but basically the MOE's uh, message is that uh, all school is a good school, every school is a good school, which is something that... That is not wrong. Okay. I really firmly believe that that is not wrong. But what yeah. the, but the main difference is uh, all schools are good schools, mm. but they are definitely better schools. Mm, mm. Which is and that is not because of schools. Mm. It's because of the alumni. I agree. And I feel that this is a topic that actually John and I were thinking about doing this topic specifically. But then we were saying mm. that like both him and I are like from JC. We are from both a quite reputable school. So we wanted someone who is like a bit more from a neighborhood school or like a less known school to come on and give their opinions on it. So we will definitely be doing that episode because it's something mm. I'm very interested in. But yeah. in the meantime, I guess this and this entire like narrative around what's a good school and what's not adds on to the pressure to get into one of them and adds on yeah. to the whole elitism that surround that seems to be plaguing our correct, society, correct. I guess. Be- because because uh, even though the the great system, right, yeah. is to manage the capacity of certain schools at the start, yeah. it has definitely be created a situation of scarcity. Yes. Right? Yes. And for ill informed people, scarcity just looks like more exclusive. Mm, 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 so the people who are within that system, right, will may start to develop feelings that they are better than other people. And yes. that's where the elitism appears. Do you feel like 
uh, in CJ or in Katik High uh. that there was that mindset that you guys were better than other people? I think yeah. that it is so ingrained in the culture of the school that you don't even realize until you reach almost 30 years old and you look back and think about it. Okay, so 30, yeah, now in that in that hindsight, do you feel like there was that? Absolutely. I think there's definitely things that were done there so subconsciously, right? That okay. like, I don't even have a way to change already. It's just deep seated <laughs> unless the world collapses tomorrow or something. But anyway, mm-hmm. one clear cut example is what we mentioned earlier about how there was this notion that, oh, you're not good enough. That's why you go poly. Yeah. That's tough. Not, that's not it's fair. It's not rooted you in know? anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely unfounded. In fact, there are so many successful people who also can't go through the poly system. Right? In fact, in university, let me just tell you guys now, like I've said this in the A-level episode, episode three of IMO, but the people who are doing very well in university right now in my batch, right, are mostly poly students. And I am like struggling to keep up with them. So that's, it's not rooted in any facts. There are some people who are like, uh, who just suit the poly system more than the JC student and uh, JC system. And that doesn't mean anything. It just means that they learn in a different way. And in that yeah, way, they still succeed just as much as or even more than a JC student. And hence, and hence, this is why we come back to the earlier sentence about how every school is a good school because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get what I mean. <laughs> and I mean, in Hua Chong, uh, I, I generally think that Hua Chong people are pretty open-minded. And I think a lot of people okay. might, not have, might have very different... Um, experiences with Hwachong before and I if you have I'm, I really apologize I'm so sorry but <laughs> at least for for my experience and my friends we are like super chill with anyone <laughs> we don't really care who you're, where you're from we we just want to have a good time we we think that um, so what if you're Hwachong like we had that mindset you know like Hwachong so what like Lim RI so what CG, uh, ACJC so what no one cares yeah but, but okay lah yeah, la. I would say that that would be the vast majority. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely a few that think they're better. People in all schools, to be honest. Fair. I think that they are better than other people. Uh, even in Huachong, like uh for because we had this O level class for people who like didn't manage to do as well academically within the secondary school system. And then because of that, they think that they might not be able to do well in A level. So they decide that okay, since it uh maybe IP is not a good program for you why don't you try to get O-levels and then you can see whether you want to go into poly or a different JC or if you can get back to Hua Chong, even better. So, there yeah, are mm. people who end up being in the O-level class and I, I, would, I would say that, I don't know whether it's just me, but uh, from what I s- observe, the O-level class of people in Hua Chong is con- are considered like outcast or they're considered like, uh, uh, I wouldn't say not as good but like different and because of that, they don't really hang out with the main group the main cohort and people don't really uh, talk about them much or don't really know about them etc they are kind of like a different school in itself which is a bit weird right and uh, looking back at it what a stupid thing to to distinguish people about if, like 95% of Singaporeans take O-levels like no, yeah man no one cares yeah like it's just stupid but like but last time I don't brought this up uh, yes, just now when we were like discussing this topic a little bit um, the reason why we 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 put this a cat or thing in like such a high value is because at that time it was all we knew. It's all we know. That's our life. Academics is all we all we cared about at the time, and mm. unfortunately, and rightly so, and rightly so because mm. this is the system in Singapore. Yeah, and unfortunately, we don't have the benefit of like uh, I guess maturity or hindsight or having other parts of our life to understand that like academics is not everything. And yeah, uh, just because someone doesn't do well in academics that they can still succeed in other parts of life. And mm. I think that's that's what's the root of everything. So the people take academics as a as a higher signif- uh, identifier of success than it should really be. And I think that's the main problem, uh, especially in... I'll say the people schools. that we are talking about here are the adults. <laughs> because I, un- I totally understand. You see, uh, yeah, yeah. all these students, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, even up to university, okay? I'm just going to put it out there that I feel even fresh uni students, they're children. Man, they're, 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 they're kids, right? And the fact that they are children and they're kids and they are not uh, 
not the most discerning, maybe towards uni, of course they are. Yeah. It goes to show that how heavy of an influence mm -hmm. the adult guidance is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So we cannot like uh we cannot allow ourselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to breed a next generation mm -hmm. without properly analyzing our own prejudices and behaviors. Yes. I like agree. for example, you know, in your school, what you mentioned about the O level class is a very, 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 very prime example, I like to think. Mm -hmm. Because like what you mentioned, majority of the entire fucking nation, in fact, mo a lot of countries yeah. go through the GCE O levels. In fact, if anything, the IP is the weird ones. If you're from IP, yeah. you're like the minority. Yeah. Right. But the thing about it is that if all your life, right, all your young life you've been in, in, uh, in Hua Chong or in an elite school, yeah. right? Yeah. And you didn't have the chance to sit down properly and think like this, mm -mm. as far as you're concerned, it, yeah, you're not weird, it. right? Yeah, yeah. As yeah, far as exactly. you're concerned, every O-level person is beneath you because someone mm. made that distinction for you. Mm. I agree, I agree. Right? Mm. And that's where the elitism becomes, I would say, that's when it starts to become problematic. Yes, I agree. Because it breeds in people this attitude that is easy to ignore because it's small enough to not be a problem but big enough to carry on to the next generation. Yeah. Actually, on yeah. that note, do you feel like our generations are becoming a bit more um, accepting of this? Like, they're becoming no. less it is. How okay. would you say no? Okay. I would say that no. Because wow. I would say that our generation, right, we okay. apply that logic to ourselves mm -hmm. but a lot of this is rooted in our psyche so much so that when we when we uh, go about it with our children. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's something that we subconsciously draw experience from. Oh, like, think about it. Like, I ask you, okay. okay, if let's say you're a first-time parent, you're, you're a parent, for example, you have, yeah. you have kids now, right? Yeah. You have to send them to school, yes. right? What's your point of reference on choosing schools? My experience or like... Or your like own reputation, experience, right? Yeah. yeah, your own experience because clearly, you're a first-time parent. You have never sent children to school before. Mm, 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 mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you send your child your child back to Hua Chong because you know Hua Chong and they qualify for Hua Chong and then they do well yes. in what you perceive to be well. Yes, yes. That will reinforce in you that yes, I must send my kid to Hua Chong. It is true. Yeah. For, I agree. Yeah. for absolutely no reason. No reason. Other yeah. than the fact that it confirmed your hypothesis. Mm, mm, mm. I agree. Flip it around, right? You send your kid to a neighborhood school. And yeah. this time because they never do well. They have no choice. They have to go to the neighborhood school. And then <laughs> after neighborhood school, they didn't do well. What would be your response as someone who has done well? Yeah, Maybe, well you see? School. Yeah, I get uh, it. You see? Right? Mm. Why you never... Mm. Firstly, you blame the kid for not work hard. And then secondly, you'll be, you see? I was right. The school <laughs> is like that one. Yeah. I mean, the never work hard thing is also another uh, point that we talked a little bit about before we filmed. Um, This whole... Like from the parents' generation, there's this whole like notion that uh, success is that will work definitely come from hard work. So if you work hard, you will definitely succeed eventually, which mm. is, um, which is a nice sentiment to have in the sense that like it it definitely encourages people to work hard. It definitely enc uh encourages people to like uh just put their head down and uh work at their dreams. But it also comes with the mm. unintended side effect of like people uh thinking that the people who don't succeed just didn't work hard or they didn't study hard enough or they lazy. And that's a very iffy concept because I feel like even though hard work definitely plays a part in your success and without hard work, you're probably not going to succeed. But um, to succeed, there's so many other factors like your social economic factors, your um, your background, your family, right, your financial background, etc. that uh, plays so much a part in your success. And to just say that like, oh, if you're not successful means you never work hard is a very um, toxic statement lah. And I think add something mm. to the whole elitism thing also because people immediately think that uh, your grades are within your control, like fully. I mean, within okay, I, I just want to say that that uh, if you work hard, you will succeed. It's not wrong. It's not. It's not inherently yeah. bad, la. No, but the problem is, it's also not enough. Mm, 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 mm. Just having this sentiment in your head, right, is also not enough. Which yeah. is which is which is where I feel you know, in Singapore, we're struggling with. Because if you work hard, you will succeed. It's something that's very easy to understand. Yes. Right? Yeah. And the fact is, the fact is, for 
for, I, I dare say, for almost 100% of the time, in an isolated situation, if you work hard, you will succeed. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the problem is, the world is not so linear. It is not, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of factors. And that's, why, and that's what I mean by it. it's not enough. Because there are many other bases that affect how this person can perform well. For yes. example, right? Uh, uh, everyone has different definitions for success. Yes. Everyone has different talents. Yes. Everyone has different ways of working hard. Mm. And not everyone is catered the same resources to do their hard work. Yes, they're catered like, the For example, you know, yeah. purely for the fact that we have oh, uh, tests online or workshops everywhere that ask you to find out what kind of learner you are, visual, auditory, uh, kinesthetic, it's a clear indicator that everyone is different. Yes, and I agree. because of that, telling them that if they work hard without defining firstly what is the work hard and secondly uh, understanding what they are, where they are standing at, it's not gonna be enough, mm. even if it's true. And yes. that's the failing of our, of general education in, in 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 the big picture because yes, education must be, uh, standardized to mm. produce, uh, standardized tests. Yes. But the pitfall of standardization is excellent people who are not excellent at the standardized test fall through the cracks. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, I agree. And if we fail to catch these people, we squander the excellence. Mm. Or even people who are like generally in a very in a less privileged position. And something that yeah. like I feel like I never really understood when I was younger. Like the mm. fact that I had I had a stable financial situation pretty much my entire life. In fact, yeah. my entire life. And I didn't yeah. have to worry about anything I could um I didn't have to worry about doing housework. This sort of thing, like, uh, it adds up and I never understood it until recently or like, uh, until like, I went to army or something after JC. La. Yeah. But I just imagine like, if you had a poor financial situation and you had to worry about putting food on the table, that significantly reduces your cognitive resource to study. Mm. So, in that in the sense, yeah, and, you and, and, and you know, that, that is just talking about financial. There's so yeah. many other things that can adversely impact your ability to work hard and do good. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. Right? Mm. So the whole, the whole, basically we are coming back to the whole point of like elitism being such a skewed concept that shouldn't exist. But unfortunately, it does because of the various societal constructs that we have in that we have. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and like, and like this, I tell you this, this, uh, this preconceived notion is so deeply rooted in us, right? That I can do a, a thought experiment with all of y'all right now, right? And y'all will not be able to give me a consistent answer no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. So I give you an example, okay? Think about it, right? Think about it this way, okay? What is the reason, right? You will not send your child to ITE for your education. Mm, mm. what's the reason think about that answer yes and when you think about it this way right why you will not send people to ITE for for a reason a lot of times the answer becomes very biased you may be able to try to objectively think of blah 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 blah, blah but subconsciously right we all low key and we don't admit this we all low key mm-hmm. right don't even consider ITE as a choice it's true for no reason eh. it's just a reputation for no reason or- why would you why what what is wrong with saying that like I send my kid to secondary school and then after that I'm sending them to ITE? What's wrong with that? There is nothing inherently wrong. It's that's the thing, reputation, right? la, yeah. And that's why last time you, the people even joke about it being oh ITE stands for is the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Is that I thought that was just a me, like my environment thing. Yeah. Apparently it's a no. common thing in entire it's Singapore society. Common, so much so that if I'm not wrong, a TV show last time on MediaCorp or some movie, I can't remember if it's media called, but local it? media, they they joked about it on on the show. Oh, snap. ITP <laughs> is the end. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not, again, not rooted in anything like factual because, fun fact, my dad was from ITE. So, uh, he actually managed to work his way up through the whole system, went to poly, did pretty well in poly, and then now he's doing very well in life and, because of that, I have, um, I have managed to be in a very privileged position. Uh, yeah, you can life. see in the basement do podcasts. <laughs> because of him, like he worked very hard, and my mom worked very hard as well. And he was from IT, so like you know, uh, I guess 
having parents that were like that or like having parents that weren't financially very stable when in their childhood made me realize that uh, actually IT not that bad lah or poly can not why not it's just like I guess the overwhelming societal expectation or notion that IT or poly is a lesser option kind of overwhelms people at times and then when they look at the back the the, the black sheep they suddenly yeah see I confirm I agree and I mean there's obviously there's a very bad um, bad consequence to elitism especially like bullying I think bullying is a big uh, thing mm. and I personally haven't experienced it or saw it before or mm. have anyone told me about it before but actually John do you have anyone who got bullied because they're from like a lesser school or like did not as well no no I've never had those experiences thankfully but okay lah if there's one thing I want to I want to share with you I just want to I just want to disclaim about what we mentioned earlier because I think this is very important because yeah. I feel that for our younger viewers this may this may be a a bit harder to to grasp right but oh, yeah. being yeah. proud of your achievements of course yes. being proud of where you are being proud of being in an elite school has nothing to do with mm-hmm. elitism. Nothing. Yeah. Don't let people put you down because of that. Okay? I agree. Being proud of your achievements has nothing to do with elitism. Elitism is when you favor or when you hold this privilege that you have or these achievements that you have over other people. Yes. It's like how Alistair brought in the example that like... uh. Because someone is from, uh, from has less grades, so they are considered lesser. That's elitism. Mm. Being proud inherently of yourself and using the energy to motivate yourself to do even better, mm. that's a great attribute to have. Mm. But on the flip side, what we're trying to do is to help you all recognize that while you are doing this to better yourself, there are some people you must acknowledge that simply cannot. And it's not because they are less than you. Mm, I think that's what it is. Is that like recognizing that your success is not purely your efforts or not purely because of you. There's a lot of other factors in your life that mm, will limit To us. be grateful for. A lot of yeah. other factors to be grateful for. And I think that's that's where that, that will teach you, you know, what what's this this very important attribute that a lot of times school neglect to teach. It will teach you to have a great deal of humility, mm. to know that your own efforts, yes, true blood, sweat and tears brought you a certain way yes. but there are a lot of other things that also pushed you along the way and being humble like that will make you have a great amount of gratitude also to the things mm. that you have around you. Yes. And in that sense, you will not mm. put people down but still be proud of your own achievements and that's a great, you know, It's empathy as have. well, right? Like, it's to understand that like, oh, these people, like, they, in fact, I actually tutored this bunch of students who uh, I actually I tutored them when they were, I think they were from some other school in Clementi I'm not very sure I forgot which school it was from but I tutored them in chemistry mm. because I was doing quite well in chemistry in uh, JC so I tutored secondary school students mm. in chemistry and I was like I realised that actually they were super hardworking people they were damn hardworking mm. they in fact probably even more hardworking than me so like and I consider myself to be pretty hardworking already then, but they weren't mm. getting the grades because either they simply just don't have the, 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 the knack for it. Like there are some things like just doesn't suit you. Like you're not academically driven then, or like mm. you're not suited for this system. That's just how it is, or you don't get to change it. Yeah. And, or like maybe their teachers didn't do a very good job in teaching them the concepts properly, and all these things are not within their control. Are not like they can change their teacher not like they can change out their body spec or some shit like they can't do that mm. but they were working extremely hard but they weren't getting the results which made me realize that like actually I work hard I get the results mean it's just me man it's not it's a lot of other things in life that were that contributed to it and I think if I never yep. actually I never considered that younger people watch this but if you're younger if you are still in school I hope you recognize this uh, that, like Yeah, and also don't get arrested as a as a tutor because you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job, okay. But like anyways, uh I think the whole elitism problem also adds on to this uh issue for the people who are not doing as well as a self-fulfilling prophecy. So yeah. it's uh I know a lot of people uh throw on that term. If the underst- everyone understands what understands what that means, but no one really knows that it's actually rooted 
in some psychological experiment. So it's actually true. It actually does happen. So they did this experiment amongst um, Nat- uh, black African Americans, uh, African American mm. community in the uh, US. So mm. they were there was a group of people of African Americans who told that okay, normally African Americans don't do well in this subject, and then another group that were not told anything, or mm. in fact told that they will do well, and they realized that mm. the people who were told that they won't do as well did them badly in the grades in grades because they were mm. from young. Uh, or from the start already uh, given this idea that they won't do well because of their race mm. or something that they are not uh, actually a uh, kind of yeah. controller. So I think it adds mm. on because like if people who don't do well in, in grades then they have they will say like oh my god then you uh, if you're not from a good school means you'll do badly in grades or whatever or if you're not from an elite school means you won't succeed then it adds on to that self-fulfilling prophecy or people yeah. who think that like oh IT is the end. Then people who go into IT things that think that oh my life is like, uh, no point already. I won't succeed because I'm in IT. But it's not. I think this is true. You know, yeah. But I think this is problematic also because you see what will happen is that you you end up breeding us uh, a bunch of students that convince themselves. So even yes. though right, if you really want to think about it, all these for, for especially when we come back to the fact that these are all minors, mm. they have absolutely no control in this. They don't. Yeah. And the one thing they have control in is how they how they study and how they behave, right? Yeah. Suddenly, that also becomes like the like sort of their fault. Mm-hmm. When it may not mm. always be the case. Yes, I agree. Which is, you know, the flaws of such an education system. But of course, I do understand that it's impossible to catch everyone. Mm-hmm. But I think as a society, as a school system, as a bunch of adults, as potential parents, as parents and as peers to students, it is our responsibility to try to catch these people as well. Yes. And yeah, I think it's more of a, also be grateful, be un- like, be recognize that this is a problem, recognize that this is happening and recognize, uh, check some of your um, thoughts and your thought processes when it comes to these sort of things. And mm. especially if you're doing well, I mean, um, there is obviously the flip side, which is what John and I actually talk a little bit about. Like, there are people who will get shamed because they do very well. Mm. Like, they do extremely well, then they say, oh my god, you're such a nerd, whatever, then they'll get shamed. And mm. there's also the other side where if you don't do well, you also might, you will probably get shamed as well. But uh, if you're doing very well and you're getting shamed, you have to recognize that, like, honestly, you are in a, <laughs> you're still in a powerful position. Nothing, mu- nothing much the shame can do to you. But the people who are not doing well and they get shamed, right? They tend to lose a lot, lose out a lot more than you do. And as much as your problems are problems as well, you have to recognize the other side also, lah, and mm. check your privileges. And hopefully, after true. you check your privilege, right? Like, um, try to help out, like try to help these people out because at the end of the day, you understand that they just want to succeed. They just want to live life. Everyone is just trying to figure shit out. No one really has it figured out. We are just trying to live the way the best way we can. And mm. unfortunately, someone just got dealt a worse hand than you. And that's not up to them. So yes. Uh a very sobering thought for especially for <laughs> for younger people. So I hope that we yep. give a good message to you guys. But of course still work hard, lah. I'm not telling you like ah, I don't even work hard, I'll see more <laughs> day, please. <laughs> still work hard. Right. Yes. I agree. I mean, uh do your best. Of course. Do your best. Uh there are some things that um, I mean, going to poly or going to IT or anything, right? And honestly speaking, it's not the end of the world. You're what, 20 something, 16 maybe when you do, yeah. 16 when you do O levels, you, by the time you a- a- exit of poly, if you're a guy, it's like 20 something, right? Like, you still have a huge part of your life ahead of you. It's not the end. Nothing is the end. <laughs> you just have to work hard and give yourself more opportunities to succeed. Lah. But, mm. uh, and if you manage to succeed, help the other people who haven't. Because you never know what they're going through. Don't absolutely. Yeah, don't bring that prior prejudice that your parents have probably inculcated within you. Yeah, it, I mean, we we as a generation we might not be able to change other generations, but we can change ourselves, and mm. and we owe it to ourselves to be better. I mean, once again, we want to like um, we want to say that we are both from pretty damn good schools. <laughs> like we are the top few percent of Singapore. No matter how we spin it, we are. And there are a lot of things that we probably left out. And there are a lot of yeah. things that 
I, I don't know. I feel like I probably heard some people with regards to this in the past. And I honestly I'm pretty can't remember, sure I did I'm too. I'm pretty la. sure I have. Yeah. yeah. So I would like to apologize to those people first of all. <laughs> <laughs> no, apologize. no apologies from me. But I just want to say that uh, <laughs> as a two-time uni dropout. Yes. Another elitism thing. I feel like I have uh, more or less seen it all uh, for a number of things. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, I feel that having reached this point in my life, you know, where I'm a bit older and I understand all these things, I really feel that early stages of your life, yes, it's very important, but it is also very unfair to motivate people you in that manner. Mm. Motivate people by putting another group down. Yes. I and agree. that's why I personally believe elitism has no place in society. No place. And as, there are actually in... actual actionable steps that we can do Mm. to improve each other by firstly improving yourself by firstly learning some goddamn humility (laughs) I agree and being more appreciative Uh, being appreciative being grateful and in fact like being grateful will lead to your happiness so like you know what even if it's for selfish reasons just do it (laughs) like uh, be be grateful for where you are yeah don't do it for us don't do it for your friends do it for your own happiness it's true and Hopefully, if you, if you end up everyone doing it and everyone be grateful for where they are and helping other people who are a bit less fortunate than you, we will lead to a better society. And a society that's more forgiving and more gracious and less bigoted <laughs> and less prejudiced. Preach. Yeah. And Preach, brother. Preach. Especially though people from Wachong. I mean, not for my batch. My <laughs> batch, I don't watch these videos. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that you guys watch these videos. But the people who are from Wachong that are my juniors, I implore you to know, to change the Hua Chong sentiment that we are elitist assholes because there's the sentiment and I'll implore you guys to like change it and try to do your best to uh, reach out to more people who are from a different academic group from you guys and be yeah, as boy. gracious as you can, man. Because everyone has their problems in life. Everyone, when they die, is going to be in a grave. Is no one cares like where you're mm. from. No, no one cares what school you're from. So all this talk is really, at the end of the day, what we're saying is so inconsequential. And the fact that we place so much emphasis on this is so stupid. And yeah, I guess only when you grow older, then you get that hindsight. La. But we're telling yeah, it to you guys now so that you guys don't have to Just don't be suffer. mean to each other. Uh-huh. Don't be assholes. Don't be mean to each other. <laughs> yeah. And if your you're, parents are being assholes, you, you listen to them, but just ignore that part. Yes. Just that part. Think mama the whole, but until she tell you to be this, then we all think mama. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But yes. If you brave, you even more brave, sit them down and discuss. I agree. Actually, my parents yeah. have, I think my sister and I have actually talked to my parents a little bit about this. But it's mostly quite alright. It went pretty alright. And I hope that we managed to change their minds a little bit about these mm. issues. Not like my parents really needed it. Uh, they were from poly. Uh, my dad was from poly and IT. So like, I guess they already knew that all along. But yes, the main point that we're going to leave you guys off right now, we've been talking about 40 minutes on this topic. The main point is don't be an asshole. Don't be mean. Be grateful for where you are. And just Don't nice. elitism. Don't elitism. That's, yeah. that's the end. Don't elitism. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of yeah, In boy. My Opinion. Follow us on, I, on Instagram on iamo.pod and hopefully we'll be able to give you better episodes from now on. Yeah, and as always, if you all got any comments, right, please, you know, let's be polite and uh, respectful, but let's discuss in the comments. Let us know. Maybe we missed out something. Maybe our tired minds, as you can see from our tired faces, (laughs) missed out some stuff. Life is hard, guys. We're not perfect. (laughs) We're not perfect, and that's why you like us, because we like you. (laughs) We're not perfect. We definitely missed some stuff out, so please give your comments down below. If people from Hua Chong have heard you before, please say it in the comments down below. I would like to apologize on their behalf. But share, <laughs> but share it. Uh, share yes. it with us and share with us your experiences. And share this video with your friends, man. Share this video with your friends. We, yes. we, 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 we have so much love to give, you know? One heart yes. for you, the other one for your friends. Yes. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and see you guys next week. Peace out. Bye.